guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I am filming another Will I Bite video. Oh my gosh, it's so funny. I end up filming these about every two weeks or like one a month or so and it's so funny to see how the new makeup launches rack up so quickly. I admire people that do this as a weekly series because holy smokes, like it is so hard to keep up. So I'm gonna hop on trend mode here really quick and see what we have in store. I did watch my Will I Buy It video from last time, the last one I just posted, um, just so I don't repeat myself, so I'll try not to do that. The first thing I wanna talk about is this new launch by Anastasia Beverly Hills. They are doing a dip brow gel, and it says it's the perfect combination of dip brow and brow gel. So I actually really love the Anastasia brow gel. It is one of my holy grail products. I usually pick it up when it's on sale, on Ulta, they usually have like a $10 deal where it's originally $20. Seems like such a waste of money to spend $20 on brow gel when I can get it for $10. So that's usually when I buy it. And I also love to use it in my hair to tame my baby hairs because I don't usually like to use like hair gel or anything like that. So pro tip, I think I saw somebody do that on YouTube and that's how I decided to start doing it. But it works really great and you just brush the brow gel through your hair and voila, <laughs> tames your baby frizz. Anyway, I think this sounds really fun. I've always wanted to try the dip brow. I've just never ventured into it. I just don't really need that much, um, I don't know, product really to help with my brows because I do have a lot of brow hairs. So I've never really felt the need. I use the Anastasia brow powder to just kind of fill in and then brush the brow gel through my entire brow just to keep everything in place, but I've never really felt the need to use the dip brow um, in the pot. So I think this would be fun. I feel like it's almost just a tinted gel, um, so it'll be interesting to see what people's opinions are on this. This isn't something I'm gonna be rushing to buy as soon as it launches, but I do think it's a cool idea and I'm glad that they did it. The next thing I see on here is ColourPop's newest product. They are coming out, or they've already come out with seven liquid liners. So these are felt tip, pointy, and smudge proof, but not waterproof, and they retail for $8. And I like the idea of these. I just know I bought Kat Von D's red eyeliner, liquid liner, and honestly, with my complexion, it's very hard to get colorful liners to stand out. So, you know, or I could just use it just on like a plain eye without any color um, that's really the only way I can see it popping plus sometimes felt tip liners can be runny so they're not as opaque um, just looks a little funky so I tend to gravitate towards just wearing black these ones are fun I like the idea I don't think I'll purchase I am curious to try the black one just to see if it's any good but I do have so many liquid eyeliners right now and gel eyeliners and felt tip liners I don't really need a ColourPop liner. It might be something I throw in with an order of something else, um, but for right now I won't be placing just a specific order for the eye pencils. Okay, this one got me really excited from MAC. They are doing a collab with Aladdin, and this packaging is so cute. I don't think I would buy it, but I think it's such a cute idea. With the movie coming out, Disney is doing so many uh, live action movies. Um, I just saw the trailer for Dumbo. I know Aladdin. They're doing Lion King. Like It's going to be an interesting 2019 for Disney, but I don't think I'll buy any of these, but the packaging is really cute, and I think it would be a fun collector's item if you are able to get your hands on it. I don't know if Mac sells out as quickly as it used to back in the day, but if it does, you guys better set an alarm or something for that. This I'm kind of excited for because I've really been enjoying Natasha Denona products. So um, she is doing a new concealer and a new improved formula for her Foundation X coming spring 2019. So I'm very excited for that. I think, I feel like it'll be full coverage. I hope it's a really good full coverage foundation. I myself am a very full coverage girl and I feel like that is Natasha Denona's vibe. She does have another like tint type foundation. I don't really know exactly what, but I'm excited for this foundation X because I think that will be a super interesting launch. 
I don't know if I want to talk about Too Faced, but let's do it really quick. So they are doing a whole new collection. This is their Spring 2019 Natural Lust. They are doing a Cocoa Contour Palette eyeshadow as well as something else. What else are they doing? What is this? Okay, eyeshadow palette, bronzer, compact contour palette coming soon to Sephora. So I'm trying to find something nice to say, but I don't know the last time I used a contour palette. That's my first thing. These look nice. I don't understand that deep highlight shade. Like, is that actually the right shade for somebody that would use? Because I feel like I would be the deep contour shade. And then I'd want the medium highlight shade. And I feel like if you're using that deep highlighter, the deep contour shade would, you, would need to be a lot deeper. So maybe it would have been a better idea if they did individual compacts instead of throwing everything into one palette. I remember when I used to go hard for the Kat Von D contour palette I used up the middle shades and then there was two on either side that were barely used up so it's just kind of always a waste of product I do have did I put it away I have this amazing makeup forever if I can link the picture I will I bought this two years ago 2017 Christmas it came out I believe and it's perfect for me because I do makeup on the side mostly for friends I've done a few weddings and stuff like that, but it's usually for friends. And this Makeup Forever palette helps me so much because it has enough diversity of skin tones where I can use it on many different people, including myself, somebody darker than me, and people lighter than me. So it's like my go-to palette. This one, I don't know. I don't feel like it's going to be anyone's go-to for multiple skin tones. And the eyeshadow palette's very typical Too Faced. And that's all I have to say for that. It's probably going to be very expensive, and I'm sure whoever buys it will enjoy it very, very much. But it won't be me. <laughs> Beauty Bakery is coming out with a new palette. It's called The Proof is in the Pudding Eyeshadow Palette. It includes nine beautiful, sweet, warm shades for $38. So I tried Beauty Bakery um, last year or the year prior. I can't remember. And their formula is nice. Their eyeshadow formula is nice, but it's not anything that I'm like crazy about so I actually ended up selling both of my Beauty Bakery palettes on Poshmark um, so because of that since I've tried their formula I'm not planning on buying more from them anytime soon plus this palette I have these colors over and over again so I will be passing on that particular palette okay here's something I kind of wanted but I decided to be good because I just bought all the Colourpop mascaras this is the Pat McGrath Fetish Eye Mascara dramatically lifts, lengthens, and seamlessly builds for lethally luxe lashes that defy gravity with lash extend, uh, gravity like lash extensions in a tube for $28. I personally hate paying a lot of money for mascaras. I'm totally a drugstore mascara kind of girl. I was recently in Vegas and honestly I was at Sephora and there was nothing I wanted. So I decided to buy the Hourglass Caution Mascara just to buy something and this is a very nice mascara. People have been asking me what mascara I've been wearing on Instagram, and it's this one. It makes my lashes look long, thick, all of the above. <laughs> and it's nice. It's gold packaging. Come on. Like, Hourglass killed it with that mascara. I tried it in a sample size when it first came out, and I really liked it. I wasn't sure if I was going to like the full size, because sometimes full size mascara really ruins it for the trial size. But this one actually lives up to the hype of their trial size, so I really am appreciative that I bought that one. So I had to pass on Auntie Pat's mascara because I can't buy everything, and that's okay. This I thought was a odd launch. Anastasia Beverly Hills launched some glitters on Valentine's Day. They called it the Love Collection. I saw so many people freaking out, and they're like, I don't even care what's in the box. I'm just going to buy it because the packaging's so cute. And... Honestly, it's, uh, it's kind of like a wasted opportunity. I feel like it would have been so great if they did some loose glitters and they did like corresponding eyeshadows. Like I think that would have been cool if they did some metallic reds and pinks. I think that would have been a fun addition to Anastasia's line. Um, these were $15 a piece and then their glitter adhesive is $18. If you wanted the heart shape box, it was $60. So all very pricey for just a bunch of glitters at the end of the day. And so I definitely have no interest in that. I'm sure there's people out there that were interested in that. Let me know if you pick that up. I'd be curious to hear your thoughts. Um, Trendwood's been doing a lot of like sneak peeks of stuff that's coming to Sephora in the spring. 
kind of not that interested in my opinion. Patrick Ta is coming out with a makeup line. He's been working on it the last few years. Created his own brand called Patrick Ta Beauty. Um, it looks like it's about to drop real soon. Major Glow is on the way, blah, blah, blah. So I've been following Patrick Ta. He does a lot of celebrity makeup as well as like a lot of the YouTube influences. I know I've seen him a lot on Desi, um, Desi's Instagram and he, she's been on his um, and I think he does, like, all of the Kardashians and stuff. I don't know. I've seen him all over the place. Um, and he's young. He's actually really cool to follow on Instagram. Um, he did, like, a then and now, and I was just shocked. So it's really, like, crazy how your life can, you know, evolve from high school. He's a great um, mentor, or he could be somebody very inspiring for any of you that are young in high school, struggling with your image and things like that. You know, it always gets better, guys. You know, you should never lose hope on <laughs> where you might end up. I should show you guys pictures of me when I was in high school. I was so lanky. I had no like figure and I didn't let it get to me at all. It's just, it, it always gets better. So anyway, I'm interested to see how his makeup line will turn out. I'm not even keeping up with the makeup lines that are currently producing makeup. So it'll be interesting. Like you have to really want to be a makeup producer at this point in the game because there's so many companies it's always like it blows my mind okay so Tatcha is coming out or came out with the luminous dewy skin mist and you guys the dewy skin mist was so hyped up in what like 2015 2016 on Instagram and YouTube like Jeffree Star Jaclyn Hill were taking baths in the Tatcha dewy skin mist was it like one of their first products I actually have one I don't know if you can see it but I got mine when I went to the Makeup My Mario Masterclass because it was in his goodie bag. And honestly, I haven't even used it that many times because I thought it made my face look like I sprayed Pam on it because it was so, like, shiny and kind of greasy. Um, I need to just use it up and get it out of my collection. Um, so I never went back to it. But honestly, this winter has been one of the worst winters, like, record worst winter in 20 years. And my skin has been so dry. So I'm so curious to buy this and try it out, but it's also like almost $70. So I'm like, mm, mm. so I'm trying to like hold off, but I might get it during a Sephora sale. We'll see. Not 100% sure, but I'm curious about it. I really, really, really want to try these Clinique Cheek Pop blushes. And they just came out with a limited edition palette with three shades, Ginger Pop, Sunkiss Pop, and a Pearl Pop. Um, I don't know that these are going to work with my skin tone, so I don't want to buy it, but I love the idea and so many people rave about how nice this formula is. So I really want to try the shade Cola Pop and I put it in my bag and take it out and put it in my bag so many times during like VIB sales and stuff. Um, and I just have so many blushes. I just, it always gets like, you know, moved back to my loves list. So someday I might get one. Okay, I did talk about this on my Instagram as well, if you guys follow me. Benefit came out with a bunch of new stuff, and they're also coming out with some new bronzers. They're going to do Hoola in two deeper shades, Caramel and Toasted, and I don't even know the rest of it, but I was literally seeing red when I saw that post, because for years and years and years, so many people have endorsed Hoola as their go-to contour shade, blah, 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 blah. And honestly... I got Hula in my Makeup My Mario Masterclass bag because I think they were one of his sponsors at the time. And it's basically my skin tone. So when they were doing all these other versions of Hula, when they did Hula Light, they did a liquid. I was really hoping they would do more shades. And I, 2019 is the year for Benefit to become a go-getter, join the rest of us in this century, and actually do more than once shade of the, one of their cult favorite products they've come out with more mascaras and they've come out with shades of hula at this point and i don't know i feel like it's a bit sucky that they did that i'm not like trying to cancel benefit i just want you guys to think about this for a second and understand that it took them this long to come out with a shade of hula that works for people with my skin tone darker than me even even like dark 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 so it just sucks because i think there's still people that can't use hula 
Um, they finally come out with two darker shades, but I feel like it's too little too late. So I'm just like, I'm not trying to fuck with Benefit. Like there's nothing in my makeup routine from Benefit and I just don't like buying from them because I think they're a shitty company to be very honest. Okay, this I'm excited for. I did buy the quads from this launch. This is the When Wild Rebel Rose collection. Some of the products in this collection are a little bit strange. Like, I don't understand the whole highlighter situation. Um, I've had a hard time finding pictures of it. It looks black in certain lights. I think I saw somebody post a picture and it actually looked like a deep purple. I'm not really sure. Um, the liquid lipstick shades I can live without. The glossy lip shades I can also live without. So I just went for the eyeshadow palettes because I recently filmed a video. It's not up yet. Um, of a full like get ready with me using wet n wild products and I used some of their newer um, 12 pan eyeshadow palettes and the quality was actually really good it's the videos where I'm wearing like a yellow velvet shirt all those videos were filmed with the same eye look and my entire eye look is wet n wild and I was just like really impressed so I thought hey let me get these new quads and try them out because the shades did look really beautiful and unique so very excited for that. Fenty Beauty came out with their spring line. They came out with two new kilowatt shades as well as three Stunna lip paints. And I don't know. I love Fenty's foundation. I love their concealer. Holy crap, I'm wearing it today. Um but I the highlighter, I have the I have two highlighters from Fenty and they're just too shimmery for me. I have a hard time wearing them. Um, I didn't love the liquid lipstick formula, and I feel like for the price, and like, honestly, I'm never going to get through a whole liquid lipstick from Fenty, so for me, I can easily pass on them. These two highlighter shades are just not my vibe. I would never wear a pink highlighter like that, and I would never wear an icy blue like that. Just not my scene. I think the shades are cute, like the bright coral unattached looks beautiful. But I have that shade over and over. I don't need to pay Fenty prices for that shade. Um, the sultry purple I wouldn't wear. And I don't know the last time I saw somebody wear a bright pink lipstick. Except myself because I did the monochromatic makeup tag and I was wearing a bright, bright pink. But that was the only time I've actually used that lipstick because that's how little I wear pink lipstick. So I don't really feel like pink lipstick is very like trendy right now and so for all of those reasons I can stay away from that collection very easily. Um, the next thing I already picked this up this is the Natasha Denona new face palette for spring 2019 the bloom blush and highlighting palette I'm actually wearing the palette today so if you're wondering if it works with my skin tone here it is I did this makeup around like 10 this morning um, and it's 319 so it's held up pretty well um, and I like it I don't know how much I love the cream products I really am NOT a cream product person but I will show you guys and try and remember to review that product for you okay okay this I'm kind of excited for Charlotte Tilbury is coming out with the icon palette and it's 12 shades it's beautiful it's kind of colorful I like Charlotte Tilbury's I like product but I only have one eye quad from her and it's the Pillow Talk quad and it just does not stand out on my skin tone. I saw a few different people wear the palette and look gorgeous on them. I did an eye look on my friend Jelsa with the Charlotte Tilbury Pillow Talk palette and it looked so beautiful on her. Like the gold shade, her eyes were just like shimmering. Oh my god. So I'm excited because I think I'm going to use that on my lighter skin friends more because it just looks beautiful on them and so I'm excited for this because I feel like Charlotte Tilbury's products do have a level of sophistication where they're shimmery but not, they're not like foiled and it's just like this beautiful effect so I can see why she does a lot of celebrity makeup and like the Victoria's Secret fashion show it's subtle but it has impact so I love that this palette looks beautiful god knows how much it is I'm kind of scared it's probably like $80 so I don't know if I'll be able to afford it, but I got my eye out. I got my eye on it. It looks interesting. So I saw that this palette just launched. This is the Spring Palette by NARS, and it is another one of their Exposed Cheek Palettes. 
It looks beautiful. This one reminds me a lot of the one that came out at Christmas time. Um, I wish NARS would just do compacts and like make their products a little bit more affordable, but if you don't have any blush and you want to buy one thing, this would be cool. I think that formula a lot of people really like. NARS has bomb packaging. I personally just don't need another NARS face palette. I still have so many that I picked up last year, so I need to use them up. And so I will be passing on that. Okay, the next thing I see on Trend Mood is Sleek Makeup's new palette, highlighting palette. It is limited edition, four different highlighting shades called Love Shook. And I did see this on Ulta today when I was scrolling through. It did look very beautiful, but I talked myself out of it because I just bought that Natasha Denona one. And I have the one that Sleek came out with that everyone has, the one that Jaclyn Hill was raving about a couple of years ago, and I never use it. And I'm actually trying not to buy highlighters and blush, even though I just did. Um, so I will be passing on that one. KKW came out with some lip sets. And these are so cute. I was on her website looking at them because my friend Nisha bought these because she was in LA. And she went to the KK Beauty store. And I was like, oh, they're so cute. But they're 65 bucks a piece for four little lipsticks. And I just know myself, I don't wear lipstick enough. <laughs> So I can't justify spending $65, but I do think they are so, so cute. Tarte is coming out with a new foundation, and this one's actually already out. I kind of want to buy it and try it on my skin tone just to, like, make a video out of it. I thought it would be so interesting because I think they're trying to redeem themselves. This is called the shape, uh, what is this called? It has, like, a play on words, face tape foundation. So it is... A new version of the Shape Tape Concealer. It's called the Shape Tape Foundation. They came out with 50 shades, 5 undertones. So they have neutral, sand yellow, honey peach, beige pink, and golden olive. And these are vegan, waterproof, sweatproof, transfer proof. Da 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 da. Uh, they launched today, I believe, on Ulta's website. So I did see them on Ulta.com. And I really want to try it. I really want to try it. I want to see what it looks like. You guys, for the longest time, before I really, really you know, started trying out indie brands, I literally thought the world consisted of Too Faced, Tarte, you know, NARS, um, and a few other brands that are sold at Sephora. So for the longest time, I wanted to find a shade in my skin tone from Tarte. I had bought so many different Tarte foundations, plus they always have good deals on their website, so I wanted so badly to find a Tarte foundation that would work with my skin. Lo and behold, nothing worked. Everything I bought, I always ended up taking back or it looked orange, or it was just not the right coverage, or the, not the right color. So it always just kind of like tickles my fancy that Tarte is trying so hard now to expand their shade range, uh, probably because they got into so much crap from their other foundations. But it's so funny because everyone was like boycotting Tarte and this and that, and then there were a few YouTubers that spoke up and they're like, you know, Tarte's only had like 20 shades for the last like, however long they've been in existence and all of a sudden like everyone's bandwagoning on the <laughs> was it the shape tape foundation whatever the fuck they call that foundation that they came out with last year and then there's a whole disaster with their shade range and whatever but yeah it was so funny poor tart getting into all kinds of trouble these days so yeah I kind of wanted to kind of wanted to buy it and <laughs> try it just to make a video out of it but I ended up deciding that I was gonna wait on that I'm not quite convinced okay. let's talk about this so I don't know who this person is but uh Keisha K, K palette and I saw this and I was like oh should I buy it so I can like display it in my videos but my name starts with a K and I don't even want this palette because it's just it's not cute I don't like the size of it, it's not like the prettiest looking K I've ever seen either. So it's like kind of bulky and weird looking and it's orange. Like it's not really like, you know, an easy color. Like not everyone's favorite color is orange. Like if she did like a black, I can maybe see it or a white or a gold, like more neutral shade. I can see that. I know orange is like a powerful color. So people really like gravitate towards orange, but I don't know you guys like that palette and how much was it? it was like quite expensive too let me see here it is a $59 palette from a brand I'm not familiar with so I'm not buying it plus it's like completely neutral so 
yeah, passing on that, but I thought it was really freaking funny. Okay, so this is an interesting collection. This is from Marc Jacobs. It is the Steel, Steel Edo Iconic Eyeshadow Palette for $49, and they came out with a bunch of other stuff too. I think this is a really cool idea from Marc Jacobs. Definitely not my vibes, but I can see so many people already on YouTube and Instagram that are so obsessed with this idea. There's so many people that love cool tones. Also not me. I literally don't do cool tones. Like, looks like I have a black eye every time I try to do a cool tone palette. Uh, but I think this is so great that they are, you know, taking the initiative and going for something a little bit different and kind of giving the people what they want. I think that's really smart of them. So I hope you guys end up picking that palette and enjoying it. So really quick, I do want to talk about some indie stuff that I saw. I want to talk about the Rani Cosmetics palette. This is the Shattered Gems collection by Rani Cosmetics. Rani Cosmetics was started by a YouTuber. Her name is Total Makeup Junkie Shani. Total Makeup Junkie 101. She has her own YouTube channel and she started Rani Cosmetics and she is from India. Or no, she's Indian, but she grew up in California, so she's American, Indian, um, and I love her channel because she's one of the few bigger Indian YouTube beauty influencers. So I was so happy when I found her channel. I watched her reveal of the palette. She said she was trying to do something different, and I totally agree with her. I want to support and buy this palette, but honestly, it's so not me. The shades just, I just don't see myself gravitating towards these shades so I just wanted to talk to you guys about it and tell you guys about it in case these shades spoke to you um, maybe you'd be interested in supporting a smaller youtuber which I think is pretty freaking cool and let me hop over to indie makeup spotlight this page is run by my friend here on YouTube Amy loves makeup she is so sweet um, she did this little peek. I did see this on Cleonod's Instagram as well. They are coming out hopefully with some multi-chromes. These look gorgeous on their Instagram stories, so I do hope they're actually coming because they look gorgeous. Amy's got so much stuff on here. She does such a good job. They also came out, Cleonod did a Valentine's collection called the Dreamweaver collection, which is gorgeous. It was a collection of some existing and some new shades I believe these this color story is just so beautiful to me I don't really plan on buying anything from Cleonod right now because I just have so much from them um, but I do think they are a fun brand and the shades just look so beautiful Davina is coming out with a bunch of green shadows these look gorgeous as well again I just made a purchase from Davina so I won't be buying it but if you guys are in the market for some green eyeshadows look at these ones they're so pretty and they usually always have a good sale so you can pick them up when they are affordable so yeah I just wanted to talk about a few indie makeup releases that I knew about I'm sure there's tons more so check out indie makeup spotlight and Amy loves makeup if you guys are interested in finding more creators and more about indie makeup I would recommend her and that is it. My gosh, this video, I just, it's going to be a long time editing that. But I hope you guys enjoyed. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in my next video soon. Bye, guys.